All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? And welcome back to Structure Free Chica Chica Learning. And in this video, we're going to do an example problem particle dynamics and 1D motion. In this case, we're going to have a particle that's attached to a spring. I'll give an illustration so you can picture something in your head in a second. But it has an acceleration that's defined by this function, A of t is equal to some constant times sine omega t. Here, what we have is essentially an acceleration with a function of time. And we're given information is that at time t equals zero, initially, the particle is has a velocity of v0 equal to 0.6 meters per second and the position is x0 equal to 0. So essentially what's happening is that this particle is being pushed so it's got a velocity to it while it's at 0 at the 0 position. And what we want to do is plot the position, velocity, and acceleration of the particle versus time. We want to visualize what is happening. And then it's all these drawings or whatever we use, whatever equations, we can plug and chug different values of time and get velocity and position. So here's what something like this might look like. You know, we talk about a mass connected to a spring. And essentially what we're, we could be talking about here is just here, here's a wall, and then I've got this spring, boom, and a particle here, whatever you want to call it, on wheels basically moving back and forth right here, right? And we, maybe we define this way as positive x. And here, all we're doing is giving this thing a push to the right and then letting it vibrate freely, you know, go back and forth, back and forth, attach to the spring, assuming a frictionless system. So essentially in this problem, here's what we're given. This acceleration is a function of time. And here I just plugged in the values. And I'm also given some initial conditions. So at time t equals zero, my initial velocity, v naught, or my velocity at zero is equal to 0.6 meters per second. And my position, x naught, my initial position, or my position when x of x at time t equals zero is zero. All right. And what we'd like to find, we're just going to plot position as a function of time, velocity as a function of time. And we already have the acceleration function, so we could actually just plot that right away. Whether Whatever computer program you want to use, you can use Excel or MATLAB, MathCAD, whatever you want. And the other thing we're going to do is once we have these functions, these velocity and position functions, we can really plug in any position or any time value and get velocity and position. So we want the velocity when time t equals 0.5 seconds. And we also want the position when t is 0.5 seconds. All right, all right. So what do we need to do first? The first thing that we need to do here, I think once we, when we have acceleration as a function of time, the first thing we want to do is we want to determine the velocity as a function of time with one simple integration. And so here, you know, you might want to recall here that we had the definition a, the acceleration, which in this case is given as a function of time. So I'll write a of t. And in our basic definitions for position, velocity, and acceleration, we recall that this was related to the velocity dv dt. This first time derivative velocity is acceleration. What I'm going to do is just rearrange this. Because I have the acceleration as a function of time, I'm going to group all my variables together. So I'm going to set up this integral here. So here I have, if I substitute for this a of t, I've got this negative 1.5 meters per second squared. I'm just writing this out, 2.5 radians per second times t. I want to take the integral dt. Here's the bounds. Boom. Here, this would be this dv. You know, essentially, it's just the integral of 1. And now I have, this is essentially what I've set up. This here, my acceleration is a function of time. I'm going to integrate that with respect to time. And then here, on the other side, velocity, all from my, my definition of the acceleration. And so now, the next thing is to determine the bounds of the integral. So from where to where? And really, when I'm determining velocity as a function of time, I'm really looking for velocity at any time t. So I'm trying to find a function. And here, basically, the top bound is v of t. And that, because velocity is going to be a function of time here, for here, because you know I'm integrating with respect to time, my bounds are also going to be based on time. And this right here is also going to be t. I want to be able to solve this for any time t. And my initial velocity, it would be v0. and time t0 at any information that I have for this initial time. And in our case, this is 0, and v0 is this initial velocity is 0.6 meters per second. And so here, I'm just going to go ahead and integrate. And here, if I continue evaluating, the cosine of 0 is 1. And if I rearrange, my velocity as a function of time is 0.6 meters per second cosine of 2.5 radians per second times time minus 1 plus 
0.6 meters per second. And here, this simplifies even more into this mathematically v of t minus 0.6 meters per second plus 0.6 meters per second. Hey, those cancel. So here, I can get rid of that. And this is just, this right here is my velocity as a function of time. And now that I have my velocity as a function of time, I can use my definition of velocity in terms of position to determine my position as a function of time. And here, just to recall, that definition of velocity was dx dt, the time derivative of position. Here, again, if I just, you know, substitute my, my definition of my velocity function here, this would be I want to group variables, so by by dt from this side, and I'll bring dt over, or multiply both sides by dt. And here, now, I just have to set up my integral, boom, and boom. And again, I'm just looking at the bounds of my integral now. So here, I had some initial information at time t equals 0. The initially, at time t equals 0, my position was at 0. And I'm looking for position at any time t, or my position as a function of time. And here again, at any time t. And now I just integrate with respect to time. I complete the calculation. This is my position as a function of time. Yes. So if I want to determine the velocity at 0.5 seconds, all I got to do is plug and chug. So here, as a little side note, if I wanted the velocity at 0.5 seconds, and this is 0.189 meters per second. And then my position at 0.5 seconds, I just got to again plug and chug. And this is going to be 0.228 meters. And there's another answer to part two. But last but not least is I just need to plot. I just need to plot my position, velocity, and acceleration as a function of time. And wabla, magic. Just kidding. No magic here. You got to use a spreadsheet or a program. I, I'm, I'm kind of old school. I've got an old version of MathCAD running. And so here, check this out. This is my... This is the acceleration velocity and position as a function of time from zero to three seconds. Uh, the un you know, the units of this changes depending on what you're looking at. So this red dotted line is the acceleration as a function of time. So you can notice at z at time t equals zero, the acceleration is zero. The blue line here is the velocity as a function of time. And remember that initial condition at t equals zero, that velocity right here. This point right here was 0.6 meters per second. That was given information information for us. And the green line here represents the position as a function of time. And here initially, this was zero meters. When t equals zero, we had zero meters for the position. In the problem, you know, it was asking for the um, position and velocity at, at 0.5 seconds, which is right around, right around here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, maybe a little bit, just a tad bit more to the left. But here, in any case, at this point right here, if this was t, if this is 0.5, seconds this value right there was the position at 0.5 seconds which is 0.228 meters and this value right here this blue line that blue dot that was the velocity which we found i believe to be 0.189 meters per second Ayo. All right. Hopefully that was a useful example. The, you know, the bottom line really is, can you recognize that you're given the acceleration as a function of time in a problem statement? And then can I set up the integral to determine the velocity and then the position? And that means I would have all the pieces of information and describe the kinematics of this particle. And it's all its motion and glory. You know, once you can set up the integral, all of that is just calculus. And that, my friend, is not my fault. It's your fault. Don't judge me. Judge yourself. Take it easy. Such a free